It's the beginning of a Matthews. talk about episode 64 of Pokemon Horizons and I gotta say before we get back I, it looks like I'm doing daily uploads okay so I hope you guys enjoy that you know I hope that's good for you all uh, but I, I guess I'm here daily uploads to try to catch up on this shit and as soon as I'm done with the catch up then I can start working on other content okay because this is like the bread and butter of the channel so I, I need to hyper focus on this uh, but I will be working on other stuff on the side, right? To, to have it ready for when I eventually start making different content. Then you guys will be able to follow along. And it won't just be Horizons back and forth every day. But for now, this episode, uh, I liked it. Okay, this is, again, I still think that they could have extended a little bit longer the whole implementation test stuff. And, like, giving the kids time to, like, explore Paldea. Because that's, like one of the whole points of a fucking adventure anime, but, you know, not an expert on, on anime or anything like that. I'm just saying, okay, if you're going to give me, like, an adventure story, I would like some fucking adventure here. <laughs> uh, but I guess it's, like, setting up for whatever the next arc is going to be. We finished the implementation test stuff, right? Now now we're heading to the next chapter of the story, which is more explorer shit and, and, and Liko and the gang, you know, dealing with all that nonsense, right? So... This, the only highlights for this episode that I want to talk about is this is the official turning point for Emetio. Like I've been saying this since probably the beginning of the series. Well, actually, since they introduced Spino, right? Since they introduced the rest of the crew for what the explorers are, I've been stating that Emetio at some point in the series is gonna turn, right? He's gonna he's gonna go against his his group and he's gonna somehow join the the, the main kids, right? Uh, and, and the Brave Asagi people, right, that, that's where I, I envisioned him going. I've said it for a while, but it, I started highlighting it more as soon as they introduced Spinel. And, and I meant Spinel for a fact, like, I don't care about Onyx and Sango. I, I shouldn't say that. I like Sango and Onyx, well, mainly Onyx, but, um, and, and the, like, Agari is, like, the only one that's, like, whatever, right, at, at this point. He hasn't really done much, right, but, like, I, I specifically talk about Spinel because he's the antithesis to Amethyl as a character, right? Ever since the beginning, you always knew these fuckers hated each other. There is something between them. Something happened in the past. There's something that that happened between the two at some point in their lives because they fucking hate each other, right? And the thing is, because Amethyl has the backstory of like that he's the grandson of the leader of the explorers and all those other shit, and Spinel has like this fucking ego and attitude problem with. Well, he's like, he's like the best, he's the smartest, he, he's got, like, he, he, you know, he, he's got the fucking biggest ego out of everybody here. So, you, you know that Clash of Adventures are going to happen. And while Amethyl is technically speaking a bad, bad guy, because that's the way they're, they're throwing him off to be, he still has some sense of, like, pride and, and, and humbleness and, and actual, like, affinity to his partner Pokemon. Like, you just, you know, he, he respects and cares for a Sarah Led, right? Um, whereas Spinel doesn't give a fuck about any of his Pokemon, at least from the way they've shown her off. He, he, he's the guy that's going to use his Pokemon for his goals and, and whatever needs necessary to, to, to get it done, right? And it was shown off in this episode because he just fucked up his own Umbreon, okay? I'm sorry, but like, it didn't, well, first of all, I, I want to state that he didn't look that terrifying. But that just might be because it's a fucking Umbreon, right? And it's not like you can make the evolutions, like, scary. I'm, I'm sorry. It, it just doesn't work because they're supposed to be cute and generic. And, and, like, you're supposed to like them, right? So you can't really make them look evil. I, I don't think it's possible to make any single evolution look scary, right? So, but, but it's, he still fucked up his own Pokemon, right? And I think that goes against Amethyl's moral code, right? His compass would never do anything that would cause harm to his partner Pokemon. I he, he that would be like far off in a way like, bro. That's 
that's you. I, I don't touch that shit. Okay, I'm out. Right? So, him seeing that that's a possibility, that's going to cause him to take a step back, which is going to make the turn even more impactful when it eventually happens. I'm a little salty that we didn't get an actual battle between Amethio and Spino, but I'm assuming that's going to happen later down the line. Because you know for a fact these two are going to fucking go at it. Okay? Um, Amethio does have the disadvantage because Sarah is technically speaking weak to Umbreon. We all know Umbreon isn't the most offensive powerhouse in the history of the, of the games, right? He, he's fucking... But this is anime logic, so who knows? Maybe, like, Spinel's Umbreon is, like, buffed shit with its attack stat or, or whatever, um, and he's going to be able to cost this. All I know is that that fight's going to be hype as fuck. When it eventually it does happen, because it is going to happen, it's going to be hype as fuck. Okay, outside of that, Ligo, Ligo held her own against Metheo, I will give her that. But I think she let herself get flustered too easily. And it might just be because of her recent loss to Grusha. But she should have terrestrialized her Florigato. Because at that point, like, if your opponent is doing it, that's like, bro, you can do it. He's not even a fucking student, right? So they can't even use that as a, as a crutch. It's like, oh, you're not supposed to use your terrestrialization against a fellow student unless it's in a sanctioned, like, battle arena. But Amethio doesn't count as a student. So realistically speaking, she should have just done it just to get her over with. Um, it wouldn't have helped too much because you're still a grass type. But it could have worked. Um, but the battle itself was fine. Like, I don't know what wrong with that. The, um, I guess the last thing I want to point out, right? Because like I said, this is all leading to this shit. I got it. I still have no understanding why the fuck she was even here. Because like I said, she hasn't really done anything. The entire time, out of all the fucking explorers, she's done the least. So like... <laughs> I kind of hope they give her something to do in the next, like, because, like, the, arc, the next arc is going to start soon, right? So I hope to God they give her something to do. Because half the time I forget her fucking name because she hasn't done anything. Out of all the explorers, she's done the least. Like, for fuck's sakes. Like I said, she doesn't even feel like she needed to be here, right? If you're going to be like, oh, well, she needed her to move the rocks and, and hide and cause Liko to veer off course, Spindle has a BHM. Why the fuck do you need the Metacham to do it for you when you don't even carry your Pokemon around you half the time? Most of the time, you're sending them out to the fucking wild, right? And on top of that, right? Because they showed her off here. BHM was in the fucking cave by the time they got there and then teleport spit her out. You could have just had BHM move the fucking boulder, right? And then wait for you in the fucking cave. Like, it's th I, I do not understand the point of Agate right now. And I hope to God they give her something to do because as of right now, she's borderline useless, right? Anything she's done up to this point could have been done with, by anybody else, right? She has not done anything to prove her worth in this fucking group, okay? I'm sorry that I'm harping on Agate, but like, bro, <laughs> I have to state that because it brings me to, to the next point is the fact that Onyx and Sango have a purpose here, right? They need to stop... Roy and, and Dot from finding Liko, right? So they they have a mission to do something outside of the realm of where we're at, right? What the fuck was the guy they doing besides she moved one fucking boulder, right? That's just, it's a fucking insane, right? I'm sorry that I, I, I feel like I'm harping too much on it, but you guys love it when I rant and rage, okay? You guys enjoy. I remember those videos get the most views. Okay, I'm sorry, but, but listen, like, realistically speaking, like, that setup for the next episode is good. I just don't know if it's going to be anything, right? Because from the preview and from what I kind of learned um, in these past two months that I haven't watched the fucking episode, uh, this is supposed to be, like, a Liko, a Methio, like, bonding moment, right? So I don't even know what the whole point of having Sango and Onyx be over there ready to fight Roy and, and Dot. Um... But hopefully, they actually get some action in there. Um, I don't think that Onyx and, and and Sango really have the chops for it right now. Because it's not like they really did much for their fucking Tarasco course shit, right? Whereas the kids have actually grown and gotten stronger. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but I am, I'm looking forward to this. Because I've been saying this. And, and I, I hate the fact that I have to keep bringing it up. But I've been, since I've been saying for so long that Amethyst is going to turn, I kind of need that bonding moment between him and Liko because she's the fucking protagonist of the show, right? Right. She's the one that holds all the cards because she has Tropicals. So because of that fact, these two characters have to actually mellow out with each other and get to know each other 
to to make the transition work because it can't just be like oh i'm not with the explorers anymore let me be with you guys i kind of need them to actually like talk to each other and like meet meet in the middle or some, some there needs to be something here that will help the transition ease into it you know? makes it more tolerable right because if we just go from like i was a bad guy and i'm a good guy it doesn't work um but i'm really looking forward to it i i hope that they set it up good and i hope that the scenes they give the two of them together um are really well done and kind of helps Liko understand Amethio on a deeper level and then Amethio can be more understanding of where Liko's coming from um because that will help that will definitely help because Freed doesn't trust this bitch right I still don't like Freed right okay I shouldn't say that I like Freed I don't trust Freed but <laughs> I can't even say that anymore because he hasn't done anything this man's been gone forever I still don't trust this guy um <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I, you know what? I'm going to leave the review off there, okay? If I keep going, I'm just going to go on to other tangents. And honestly, that's better saved off for a stream where we can just talk and chat and all that stuff. If that's something you're interested in, leave it in the comments. Let me know. We can set something up for something like that in the future. But as of right now, we're done with episode 64. Um, I'm going to edit it. Or, yeah, I'm going <laughs> to finish the recording, edit it, and then watch the next episode so I can make the review for that one and just keep this ball going, you know? I have, like... What? Seven more episodes to go? So I'm still lacking, right? So I need to be like, you know, <laughs> get up there and, and start watching some of this shit. So without further ado, that's going to be it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I've been your boy, Soros of Croxon, and I'll see you guys in future videos, streams, shorts, and everything in between.